let us take the topic of uh, parameterized constructors from the lesson constructors and destructors. Now, I will try to explain what parameterized constructors are. Let us look at a small example here. Supposing I have a class called student and here we have int roll number and marks and we are going to make a constructor here. This is a constructor and here I write roll number is equal to 10 and marks is equal to 90 and I close the class over here. Now, here we have made a constructor, but this constructor is not taking any parameters. Now, I am going to write the same class student again, but now here we are going to make a constructor which is going to accept parameters. Now, look at this. This is the constructor here student and here I say int a comma int b like this. So, this constructor, this constructor is accepting two integer parameters whereas, this one which I have written over here, this is not accepting any parameters right. Now, inside this constructor, I am going to write roll number is equal to a and marks is equal to b right. So, whatever parameters are passed into this constructor, those parameters that is a and b are assigned to roll number and marks fine. So, we can write constructors with any number of parameters. Supposing I want to write something like this uh, student and I write here just int a. This is also a valid constructor. Now, here I say roll number is equal to 9. This value I am passing uh, directly and here we say marks is equal to a. So, whatever is coming from this construct from this parameter a that is passed to the variable marks and roll number I am initializing as 9. So, this again is a parameterized constructor. So, here these are the two constructors, this is accepting two parameters and this is also a constructor which is accepting one parameter. So, we can make constructors in any number of ways like we can give any number of parameters inside the constructor. One is this way with no parameters at all and one is by giving one parameter, two parameter or if the situation demands then more than two parameters also. Right? Now, we will take this concept of parameterized constructor further. Let us uh, look at the concept of constructor overloading. Now, what I said here that we can make constructors with different number of parameters. Now, that parameterized constructor uh, is actually implemented in this constructor overloading. Constructor overloading uh, is very much similar to function overloading. The basic concept of function overloading was the same function had different parameters, right. So, here again we have the same thing. Now, we will take a small example to show what constructor overloading is. I am going to take a class called box. Now, inside this I am going to have int length, comma breadth and height like this. Okay. Now, the public uh, section. Now, in this the first constructor I make is this and here I write 
length is equal to 10, breadth is equal to 5 and height is equal to 7. Now, this is one constructor I make. Now, I am going to make one more constructor. One more constructor means the constructor will be the same name that is box because all the whenever you make a constructor the constructor has to be uh, as the same name as your class name. Now, the difference between the first and the second constructor is now here I am going to pass a variable parameter inside this constructor. Now, here I have written box int l. So, I will be writing something like this length is equal to l ok, breadth is equal to 10 and height is equal to 6. Now, let us write one more constructor in which I say int l comma int b like this. Now, here I say length is equal to l breadth is equal to b and height is I give as 6 again. Box again and here I write int l comma int b comma int h and inside this I write length is equal to l, breadth is equal to b and height is equal to h ok and I am not going to write any functions as of now because we are just uh, going to uh, show how the concept of constructor overloading is going to work here right. So, after this I finish the class close the class right. Now, look at this this is box here, this is also box, this is also box and here again I have put box. So, I have made the constructor 4 times, but each constructor is different because the first one has got no parameters, the second one has got one parameter, the third one has got two parameters, the fourth one has got three parameters. So, here I have done constructor overloading because each constructor has a different set of parameters they are different ok. Now, let us look at how to invoke these constructors. Now, I am going to make the main method. Now, inside the main method I will be making objects of the box class. Supposing I write box b 1 and then I write box b 1 and within bracket I write 10 and one more sorry b 2 it will be here ok I will put the second one box b 2 and within this 10 and I am going to make one, one more constructor box b 3 here I write 10 comma 11 and one more object box b 4 and here I write 5 comma 6 comma 8 like this and then return and then the class is closed ok. Now, let us try to understand how these constructors are invoked. Now, first of all this is box b 1 here. Now, this b 1 after this b 1 there are no parameters given. So, this is the first one which is going to invoke this constructor right. Now, I am saying box b 2 within bracket 10. So, it has got one integer parameter. So, it will look for that constructor which has got one integer parameter and this is it. So, here l will become equal to 10. So, when I say length is equal to l, 
this length will become equal to 10 right and breadth will be 10 and height is equal to 6. Now, again I am making one more object box B 3 10 comma 11. Now, this will take me to this constructor because here I am putting two integer parameters right. So, L will become 10, B will become 11 and this constructor is invoked. Now, when I say box B 4 5 6 8 these are three parameters and for this this constructor will be called which is int l comma b comma h and length will be assigned the value of l breadth will be assigned the value of b and height will be assigned the value of h so this is how the concept of function overload uh, sorry constructor overloading works right so basically you should understand like what is the uh, different ways in which the objects can be formed objects should be formed and depending on that we should give different uh, constructors so that the programmer uh, can make objects in various ways right by passing one one variable by passing two parameters by passing three parameters or by passing no parameters at all so this is called fun constructor overloading and for constructor overloading uh, you have to first of all understand the concept of parameterized constructors and implement that in constructor overloading. So, with that I come to the end of this topic on constructor overloading. Thank you.